Good afternoon, YouTube. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it's about four o'clock um, on Tuesday. Uh, day five of uh, securement training is over. And I can say that I'm very, very glad that it's over. Um, this morning, got up usual time, 4.45, uh, to uh, take a shower and catch the shuttle to uh, get in here. Um, we actually were able to eat breakfast uh, before class today, so we ate breakfast at 6 o'clock. Um, it was uh, back to what we same thing we had last week, which was uh, scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, biscuits, and gravy, and juice. Once uh, breakfast was over and before the new orientation crew, uh, crew uh, crowded us out of the cafeteria, we headed all up to the classroom and uh, did a review of everything we learned yesterday on uh, miscellaneous type of freight. And if you remember, miscellaneous freight uh, was uh, lumber, um, palletized loads, containers, um, slinkies, and, and so forth and so on, uh, as well as uh, a little bit of aluminum. Once that was done, uh, the review, we actually took the uh, evaluation right there and there instead of uh, waiting, which has been the normal you take a review uh, earlier and then you take the actual uh, evaluation uh, later. They don't call them exams, even though they are exams, they're evaluations. So uh, once we did that, we started working on skidded aluminum coils. And that was a pretty quick uh, little thing. Uh, skidded aluminum is uh, pretty much really, really easy. It's just uh, some straps, some edge protection, and uh, you're good to go. And there's not a lot of uh, extra work required to it. They're usually pretty light, but they're just very, very bulky, usually around six, six feet tall or so. So they have to stand them on in with the eye of the sky. And of course you have to tarp them as well. We, um, once that was done, uh, we uh, watched a couple of uh, safety videos and I apologize, I'm having to check my notes. Um, uh, watch some safety videos uh, specifically on two customers that we deal with uh, Logan Aluminum and Reynolds Aluminum. They each have their own specific safety procedures they want you to follow when you come in to uh, load at their facilities. And uh, once that was done, uh, we actually headed down to the training bays and started working on uh, aluminum uh, securement. And we didn't really spend all that much time on it, we kind of did it as a group uh, and uh, did it, I think, two, maybe three times. Uh, just to make sure everybody had a good basis of what it was like. Uh, after that was done, we headed back up to the classroom and uh, they went through and made sure everybody had their log books up to date. Um, normally everybody should have had uh, eight days of logs by today. Some people had more, some people had less, depending on how things were going, especially the students. Um, I, had, I had four pages, so I had to make sure they were up to date, completed pages, and then we walked those across to the corporate office to the uh, uh, regular employee break room and uh, transflowed those logs. And they talked about transflowing, how it works, dealing with the bills um, and so forth and so on, and keeping records. Uh, I've used transflow plenty of times in the past, so I was able just to scribble on the cover sheet when I needed to, stick in the machine, hit the button, finish and walk away. A lot of the guys were having to, the people who've never done it before, even other truck drivers who've never done it before struggled with it a little bit. But basically, transplanting is a glorified fax service. All it does is it scans your stuff into PDF and then it emails it to whoever it needs to go to. Uh, once th that was done, they kicked us back and we went to lunch, and that was right at 11.15 or so. Today's lunch was actually pretty good. Um, it was actually spicy, uh, or I should say had flavor to it. It was uh, peppered roast beef with uh, mashed potatoes and uh, gravy. Um, along with salads. Um, I didn't have a salad today. The, the lettuce didn't look all that spectacular. Uh, after lunch, we went upstairs and we took our aluminum evaluation. And that was really quick. I, I think it was only maybe 10 questions. I don't remember, but uh, I, it went by really, really fast. I think, um, I don't even think I you know, looked at my notes once during that eval. So. Um, after that, they kind of gave us a little bit of a break where they did a couple things and then did some talking uh, about some various aspects, including the TransFlow mobile app, which you can use on your cell phone um, and how to set it up. Uh, if you 
choose to do it that way instead of having to rely on going to uh, truck stops to a transpo, which is kind of nice to have that convenience, but since you are already going to be at a truck stop anyway, Pilot Flying pilot fly Jerry loves uh, to buy fuel, you might as well go ahead and transport while you're standing there. I think the real reason they are kind of pushing the app is so as soon as you're done and you do your empty call at a, at a receiver, you can scan your, you can use your phone to scan those bills and get them right to the company because that way they get paid immediately. Because uh, their philosophy is this, we get paid the second we do the empty call and they would like to get paid just as fast. So if you send, they say if you send your bills in within uh, you, you, if it's during business hours of the same day, usually Maverick can bill that, that customer the next day and have their money within like whatever it is, 30 calendar days, depending on whatever the net is for, for Maverick's billing. After they went over that, we actually, uh, they talked a little bit about their stuff, got it set up and we did our hands-on final evaluations today. Um, it was, uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more than probably other stuff so people coming in here will even new students will know what is involved in this in this and I'm gonna try not to eat up too much time but uh, basically you everybody goes into the training base at one time what they've done is they've set up 10 stations throughout the training base of, uh, of different builds of things that, that Maverick covers and you are assigned a station to start at so like I was assigned to start a station eight so I would so, I'm excuse me, station nine. So I started station nine and as the, as the progression moved through it, I would move, I'd go to 10 and then I'd go to one and then work my way back and finish at eight. The way they do it is uh, you can't do anything to, you, they, you hear the horn blow. And once the horn or whistle blows, then you get five minutes to examine the load that they have put out. And there's a clipboard hanging there that tells you what the load is, if the, everything you need to know. Size, weight, <laughs> that was uh, our uh, training coordinator. He's a really great guy and you'll get to meet him if you get to come out here. I'm not gonna give his name, I, don't, I wanna protect the innocent or the guilty as depending on how things go. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, when you get to the state, your starting station, you can't do anything. And then when the horn blows or the whistle, depending on uh, what they're using, you have five minutes from that time until it blows again uh, to examine the load and you start off by looking at the clipboard that's attached to the trailer to see all the pertinent information what is actually supposed to be because it's all simulated how much is supposed to weigh how long it is so forth and so on and then also is there there's a, the study manual for that particular type of load is on de the deck of the trailer and you can use it if you so choose and in that five minutes you need to examine the load um, and check everything uh, based on securement for that load and to determine what is wrong. Um, and so and then on your test sheet, you go to the number that you're on and you write up to uh, have whatever is wrong with it. And there's usually up to four items. Now, there's not always something wrong. Sometimes there could, you know, there could be nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, I can say uh, that one of, the, uh, one of them didn't have anything wrong at all. And uh, some of them had questionable wrong things. It all depends on how you looked at it. It was a really, really good exam. It gave, gave it gives them an idea of what kind of knowledge you have, and they do it this way because if you are if you have a load and you're meeting another driver, it's a swap load. It's either so you can get home or he can get home, or it just works better for the company for you to do it or, or him to do it. Then you have to examine their work to see how they secured the load so you understand and know that it's properly secured on your end so you don't get in trouble when something happens. Um, the whole testing uh, took about an hour, um, the, you know, five minutes at each station and they give you one minute to move from station to station, it's really long. Everybody got done, it took about 50, 55 minutes, something like that. And uh, I can say that uh, everybody passed. Um, they were actually flabbergasted. They usually have one or two people who, who don't pass. And when they came in and gave us our results about an hour after we took it, uh, they, they said, you know, we all passed, which was awesome. Um, I can say that uh, um, I got to, they, they give the test sheets back so you can look at them. And um, other than a, some comments that I had made on the notes that really didn't pertain to the test, 
they were very, very pleased because I didn't get any wrong. I got a hundred on my final eval. So I got brownie points, brownie points. I'm very happy about that. I was kind of sweating the load because there was a couple of things I thought, well, maybe they're going, they think that's going to be bad. or that. So I listed stuff that I thought was potentially wrong and they would write, they would just mark out and say, this was actually okay, but good observation skills or whatever the comment is. So I can say that I'm done with hands-on securement training. However, after that was done, we took a break and we started tarping. <laughs> and we started with lumber tarping. Um, uh, and uh, I've done tarping before when I, when I pulled lumber, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but tarping is a huge pain in the butt that everybody in this industry just has to deal with um, at some time or another. Um, but uh, they cut us out early because other, the uh, regular drivers or experienced drivers, they cut us out early because the student drivers have a whole battery of videos and stuff that they have to watch this afternoon before they can go. Um, so tomorrow we got to be back at it, 6 o'clock in the morning, just like every other day. And tomorrow is tarping pretty much all day. Uh, till three o'clock and at three o'clock those of us uh, the experienced drivers or drivers that are our guys that are here at the end of their student training but are taking their flatbed training now I'm not sure how that works um, we have a couple guys that, are, that were doing TCD and decided to go flatbed so they're in flatbed training so they'll actually do what they call crossing over or bridging or something along that line tomorrow at three o'clock and that's where we meet our fleet managers we find out what I go to go to our operations unit and so forth and so forth and so on like that later in the afternoon um, and they gave us the rest of the schedule as well on Thursday uh, we're done with all that tarping is really only one day it's might be part of the morning on Thursday but come Thursday lunch we're done and that's when we find out um, when and where we are getting our trucks. Um, some of the people that got their trucks today who got out of glass training or finished their evaluation, their student in the student evaluations yesterday, got their trucks. Um, there was five of them. Only one of them got their truck here in, here at uh, Little Rock. Uh, the other four had to go someplace else. And I do believe they said Gary, Indiana. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm hope, 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 hope that I'm able to get my truck here. Because if I have to go to Gary on Friday to get my truck, that means I will not be home for the weekend. And I would like to really be home for the weekend. Because if I go on Friday, then I'll have to go get a load and then drive the whole weekend to get home. And since that's a two day drive from Gary, um, eh, not really two days, but it's a long drive, um, especially if I have to go up there, then um, I won't be home for the weekend. I might get home a couple hours on Sunday and that will be it and then back to it. Uh, I'm hoping that I can get my truck here. Now there is a possibility that they may just send me home and I will fly from home to wherever I need to get my truck, whether it's Gary or one of the other centers. I just hope I can get it here and be done with it. So that's it for today. Um, I'm a big happy camper because now I'm officially a Maverick flatbedder. I've uh, passed uh, through the training. Um, and I can, I can say that it's a great, great, great feeling. Um, I'm going to touch on a quick one here before I run out of time. Uh, I've been getting questions about the agility test and the lifting. Um, the agility test is not really that difficult. I explained it pretty well in my first video. A couple of people asked me, don't you have to lift 120 pounds and carry it around the room? No, you do not have to pick up 120 pounds and carry it around the room. Uh, the weights they use in the agility testing weigh about 60 to 70 pounds. They're not that difficult. Even the move, they're looking more for your movements as opposed to your raw strength. However, you do have to pick up a 120 pound tarp, but not until you start tarping class. We did that with the first thing we did this morning. We had to pull a full size tarp out of the side box, pick it up and put it up on the trailer. And then take it off the trailer, pick it up and put it back down. You don't have to carry it anywhere or any of that stuff. You may have to when you roll it back up, if you roll it back up on the ground. But since most rolling and unrolling takes place on a trailer, you shouldn't have that problem. So, that answers that. Um, I appreciate you watching for the last uh, 10 episodes, or yeah, last 10 episodes, including this one. Um, it's been a great journey. There is more coming. I will talk about tarping and my crossing over uh, at a later time. And of course, my adventures as I go out on the road as a, as a new flatbedder. So, if you've enjoyed this video or uh, any of the others, take a moment and subscribe to me. And, uh, Follow me here. If you have any questions, please post them down in the comments below, or you can email me. 
uh, it's available on the site. Um, or if you're on TTR, you can, you can post there as well in the Maverick forms. Um, like I said, I'm giddy and I'm very happy. So I'm gonna go out and uh, get me a steak. No, I'll take it back. I think I'm gonna go get some catfish for dinner. I've been hankering for fish for the last couple of days. So keep the shoddy side up, 73s, and uh, you have a good day.